um, uh, you know, about it. So, some of these names I've never heard of, but they're creeping in. Um, there is a guy by the name of uh, Henry Blackaby, and um, he has this uh, this seminar. You know, one book turns into seminars, and it turns into calendars, and it turns into Bible studies. You know, it's, Rick Warren has set the tone for this thing. You, some guy writes one book, and all of a sudden, it's it's you know, it's everything, and it's everywhere. And um, he has this whole lecture thing called Experiencing God. Now, that sounds good. Sounds, sounds spiritual, okay? God is to be, I've seen billboards, church billboards, because God must be experienced. And I want you to think about what, what this really means. It, it really means that if you don't get, um, if you don't get uh, doodads spinning up and down your back, if you don't have the hair stand up on the back of your neck, or you don't have some big emotional thing, that goes on with your church service or your Bible study or whatever it is, whatever religious practice you're involved in, if you don't have some hair-raising emotional thing take place, then obviously God wasn't there. And that is a lie. That is a deception, and that is a lie. I knew a, um, I knew a pastor's wife that um, uh, I, I've known these people for years, knew their family, and uh, he was a he was a good guy, good pastor, and he had, he called me out to preach a revival at his church. And um, so I was out there preaching, and um, he came to me and he he said, "I I got something. I, I think I need your help on." This man was older than me, been in the ministry longer, uh, but he said, "I think I need your help here." And he said, "It's it's my wife," and you know he kind of told me the situation going on that uh, at one point she disrupted the church service and um, she got up in front of everybody and demanded that everybody get spiritual and everybody start doing this worship thing. And, I, and, and I'll throw this in too. Be careful of a preacher or a teacher or a ministry that is overly um, concentrated on worship. Overly concentrated on worship. They're, they'll start giving messages about worship, and oh, worship is the key, and worship, you got to do worship, and God's going to release something if you worship Him, and the way to get close to God is through worship, and it's all about, and you know what, and you know what that is? It is acts or works based God acceptance, and let me explain that, and I'll tell you this story. Uh, he brought her to talk to me, and we're sitting there talking, and I listened to her for a little while. And she was, she was all talking about how she wanted this closer thing with God and how she wanted to please God and how she wanted to serve God and how she wanted to do this and do that. And, and I detected and I found out that, you know, she had come from a broken home, that there was uh, some, some bad things happened in the house, and, and she grew up without a dad, and I mean, all kinds of things going on. And her mother was uh, sort of this Jezebelish woman anyway. And what this pastor's wife was really looking for was that she was really looking for something that she was doing in the church service or in private or whatever that would release this little manifestation in her life to make her feel accepted in God, that she had done the right thing and God was going to touch her with this little magic potion or this little magic wand and give her the goosebumps all over the place and then she would feel good about herself and feel like she was accepted in the Lord. She was waiting on feelings to confirm her covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. She was way, and if she didn't get the feelings, she had she had been convinced through a, you name any one of a hundred false teachers out there. She was convinced that if she didn't receive the response that she wanted from God, that is the emotional high or whatever it is, then there was something she wasn't doing right, something she wasn't pleasing God in, something that uh, she she didn't perform all the right worship acts in the church service, or she couldn't get everybody. She went around in the church service demanding everybody to worship and to get spiritual and went around laying hands on and her poor husband not wanting to make a scene of her publicly was just kind of standing there going and he told me he said mike i didn't know what to do i didn't know how to handle it i mean i just i just stood there stunned and froze he said but i don't want that to happen again and I counseled her, and another pastor, a good friend of mine, counseled her as well, and he told me the same thing. He, and she never really, to this day, I don't know, I don't know if she ever got over this thing. 
But she was looking, and I told her, I said, and I was very, very blunt with her. I said, let me tell you who you're doing this for. You're not doing what you're doing for God. You're doing it for yourself, and there's a difference. You're doing these things because you want God to release this little magic anointing in your life and give you these goosebumps and this feeling, and then you'll know that you've done well in God and you're pleasing in God's sight. And I said, you're not doing this for God. You're not worshiping God. You're worshiping yourself in doing this because you're not satisfied until you feel this emotion, until you feel this feeling. And so I'm telling you, this. I, whenever somebody starts overly pounding from the pulpit or from the from the teaching ministry or the books or whatever about worship is the key it's all about worship and you got to get into worship and you got to if god god's going to god's going to release this if you worship him and you got to get into worship worship is a groove it's a river that you that you flow into and if you're not worshiping god the right way then god will not release anything in your life and it's the same kind of witchcraft that is in the word faith movement that says if you don't say the right things, God's sitting up in heaven going, up, oh, yep, you got to say the right words, and you, I got to know you believe it, and I, I'm not moving, I'm not doing anything until you say it. And it's almost like God's up there with this little kid, unless you give him the right candy, he's not going to do what you want him to do. And it, I'm, it's witchcraft is what it is. So here is uh, here is Blackaby talking about experiencing God. God, ex God is to be experienced. And uh, let me read to you some things that um, that Blackaby has written. He's kind of explaining himself on this whole experiencing God thing. Uh, and it does it. It never ceases to amaze me that there's always seven things that these authors put out. Glenn Beck puts seven things. He's got to do seven things. Um, Ed Young Jr. Seven nights. And really, I mean, I didn't get into this in the Watchmen broadcast, and I'm not going to describe it much now. But if you looked at the promo video that Ed Young put out on YouTube, it shows. It says day one, and it shows a different scene around the house. And then day seven finally ends up in bed, and I get it. I get it. It's disgusting. But these people are always talking about seven things that you could do that you got to do. And I'm telling you, um, I know just a little bit about Mystery Babylon and her rituals. And Mystery Babylon and her rituals all talk about the seven Mithraic rites. In other words, Mithras is the god who's dead. He's buried. He's he's needs to be. Listen to this now. He needs to be released. And if you worship the right way, and if you say the right words, then he's going to be released. If you do seven things, the seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church are meant to be the Mithraic rites that are performed that release God. And so uh, Henry Blackaby talks about the seven realities of experiencing God. Uh, and he, he lists them as, number one, God is always at work around you. Number two, God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal. Uh, number three, God invites you to become involved with him and in his work. Uh, number four, listen to this, here we go, set up. It's all sounding good and spiritual so far, doesn't it? So here we go. Here, here's, what, here's the setup. God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible. Well, that sounds like what Pastor Mike says. God speaks through the Holy Spirit through the Bible. Now, I'm stopping right there. But he goes on. He says God speaks through prayer. Set up. Circumstances. Set up. Set up. And the church to reveal himself, his purposes are his w and his ways. Uh, number five, God's invitation for you to work with him always leads you to a crisis of belief that requires faith and action. Number six, you must make major adjustments in your life to join God in what he is doing. Works. I told you, there's works involved. Works. Let me read that again. You must make major adjustments in your life. To join in what he is doing. That is works. Salvation. That is works. Grace is what that is. You're the one that's got to change. Okay? 
Joel Osteen in um, Your Best Life Now, okay, uh, writes in there, if you will transform your mind, God will transform your life. And it's all about you. It's all about you doing something. You got to do this. You got to worship the right way. You got to worship nonstop. You got to pray nonstop. You got to contemplate. You got to empty your mind. You've got to play the right kind of music. We got to set the right kind of mood for the church. We got to do all the, if we do all of these things, no wonder most of these people are involved in dominion theology because dominion theology dictates that if we will do everything and set the table for the Lord, then he will come. But if we don't do it, then Lord, he will not come. He's up in heaven waiting for us to get off our rear ends and do something. There was a contemporary Christian song came out several years ago. I, I, it's, it's been so long since I've listened to contemporary music. I'm going to say probably... 10 to 15 years ago, I don't remember who sang it, um, it says, if we are the body, why aren't his hands working? Why aren't his feet moving? And really, when you think about the song, it's almost like, it's almost like uh, we're supposed to be the body, but we're just laying there not doing anything. Well, I, I take offense at that because who controls the body? The body doesn't control the body. Who controls the body? Da capo, da capo, the head controls the body. And it was almost a slam against Jesus why he wasn't making everybody do something. And it made me angry once I figured it out. But it's, it, here it is. You must make major adjustments to your life. And so you be careful. Now you listen to me. And there are pastors all over the place who are starting to hear about this crazy nut job in a secret compound named Mike Hoggard. And when my name is brought up, they roll their eyes. Oh, you can't listen to him. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something different. These guys will start, especially the new ones coming in, they're going to start coming in. They're going to start saying, now, granted, we, we have to build our church. We're going to build our church. We're going to make our church. Our church is going to grow. We're going to grow. Boy, we're going to put in programs, and we're going to grow. We're going to see people run for the Lord. We're going to do this. Now, it's going to require some changes. It's going to require, because growth requires changes. So you must make major adjustments in your life to join God in what he is doing. Uh, that is unscriptural. It's it's totally un scriptural. God is the one who makes the change. God is the one who makes the adjustments. God is the one who puts people where they are. God is the one who calls the shots. God picks and chooses who he wants. And if he wants one guy standing